Hey, welcome in, welcome in. I'm just going to be using this Doom Ball Brown to base paint the model. I'm just be making sure to get it in all the shadow areas. And we'll just be covering it from the top as well, so just an all over base coat. But yeah, this will be nice for our greens to sit on top of. And also when we add some rust in, or like some rust effects in later, this will help bring those out. But yeah, I do really like this Doom Ball Brown. It is a really nice colour and yeah, it's got lots of uses. And yeah, definitely suits for Death Guard or Nurgle. I'll just be using these colours for his main armour. I'm just putting the Warpstone Glow on now, which is the darkest green. And yeah, I'll be spraying this from a Xenophore perspective. And we'll just be getting it on, well, mainly aiming for the armour. And yeah, just as we're spraying this on, we're just being mindful not to cover up our Doom Ball Brown. We do definitely want that in the shadows. And just little bits of it poking through. And yeah, just as that will help for later on when we're adding our rust. And yeah, it's just a nice contrast for the green as well. Cool, so as you can see, even though it is our darkest green, it is still quite a bright colour. And yeah, we've still got plenty of the Doom Ball Brown coming through. Yeah, we're going to take this up quite high, and make it look quite garish, and that'll give us a really nice sickly Nargle look. So yeah, I'm just coming in with a moot green now. Um, spraying this one again from a centerfold perspective, and try not to cover up the previous green, and again, leaving the Doom Ball Brown in the shadows. But yeah, it's sort of just picking out our bright spots and just gently blending them with the darker green. And yeah, we're gonna get this really bright. Yeah, it'd be super cool and sickly looking. Yeah, it's checking the model over. I'm quite happy with how much I've added. Looking pretty cool already. But yeah, nice colour combos. I like these. And I'm just going to be adding a couple of drops of Dawn Yellow into the moot green that's already in the airbrush. And yeah, we won't be spraying the pure Dawn Yellow on. But yeah, this will definitely bring up the, the highlights to a really bright and garish looking level, which is spot on, that's exactly what we want. It's going to get this model super bright looking, and then we're going to add a filter over just to bring, bring all the layers together, and yeah, just make it look cool.
yeah with this one we just pick in smaller areas trying our best not to cover up our previous colours and yeah we're just picking out spots where we want it to be the brightest but yeah super cool colour combinations definitely really sickly and toxic looking nice and bright but yeah this will be popping it'll, it'll look sick there'll be so much contrast on the model so yeah it'll look really good Just give you a quick look at the model. So yeah, as you can see, we've got plenty of contrast on there. We've got all our different greens. I'll just bring the camera out so you can see it a bit better. Yeah, got all our different layers, looking cool. Still got our Doom Ball Brown in the shadows. Yeah, well happy with how it's looking so far. I'm just gonna add this Nagaroth Knight into it. We'll just be spraying this into the shadows. We won't be trying to cover up the Doom Ball Brown, we're just sort of um, just enhancing some of the shadows and just bring in some extra contrast to the model. And yeah, I find um, adding this sort of purple with the green, just yeah, it's really nice color combinations. Yeah, just plenty of um, contrast and interest in the shadows. So yeah, again, we're just spraying this from a Nadir perspective. So yeah, just from below. And yeah, we're not trying to cover up the green or the Doom Ball Brown or anything. We're just sort of, yeah, just blending, blending between the different color tones and yeah, just adding more contrast to it. But yeah, super cool color combinations. Like already, I'm really enjoying the look of the model. Yeah, let's have a quick look so you can see. Yeah, as you can see, we're not covering anything up. We're just enhancing the shadows that are already there. And yeah, looks really cool. Yeah, I'm just using this Plague Bearer Flesh and some Airbrush Thinner. The Plague Bearer uh, Flesh is quite thin anyway. But seeing as I'm using it as a filter, I just like to um, thin it down a little bit more just so I have more control over the, the opacity of it. So yeah, we're just putting thin coats on. And yeah, if I, want it, if I want it to be more opaque, I can just add more layers onto it. But yeah, we're just um, putting some, just a fine filter over it. And what that'll do is that'll just bring all of our contrast and colors together. And yeah, just get it looking really cohesive and really nice. But yeah, just all the different contrast we've put on there. This filter will just help bring it bring it all together. But yeah, here's what it's looked like after we put the filter on. So yeah, as you can see, it's just brought all the colours together. It's looking super cool. Yeah, nice. Again, just super happy with how it's looking so far. Okay, so we've got this Doom Ball Brown and the Scrag Brown, and we're just going to be using this for our rust effects. So yeah, just putting a dot of each on the uh, wet palette. And I'll just be adding some thinner to the palette as well. You can use water for this, but where I live, the water is super hard and doesn't really react very well with the paint. So I just prefer the thinner as it just gives me a more consistent result or a more predictable result. So yeah, and we're just making some different areas of paint. 
who just like super basically dirty paint water um, like a normal paint consistency for painting and then just yeah just to put the pure paint in the middle so yeah we can just um, pick from it and then make the paint consistencies as we need them for our practical applications so yeah definitely handy to have a wet palette So yeah, I'm just using the Doom Ball Brown and I'm just going to be lining the entire model. So yeah, just going around all of the edges and like creases. So yeah, all of these armor panels on his legs. I'll be going around the panels on the backpack and also his shoulder pads. And yeah, just anywhere that there's like where you can line something. But yeah, this will help break up the greens and you'll be able to see instead of it being sort of like a green like mush this will help define all of the parts I and mean, yeah just get it to stick out and look really cool so yeah it's a long step but it's definitely a step worth doing okay so here I'm using more of the sort of the dirty paint water and what I'm doing is sort of like flooding the creases on his um, arm pad and yeah that will just help bring definition to it and again just like help break up the greens and yeah just make it all stick out and look really cool and just be also using it to go over all of the pits in the armor again it's just add in that extra detail to it and help break up the green so yeah the more you sort of break up the colors and um, sort of line everything and give each part its own like detail it'll just help make the model look even more cohesive and yeah just even more cool but yeah definitely a fun model to paint loads of little details on it yeah really do like the death guard and just nurgle in general so yeah just lining up his shoulder pad there so yeah just do your best to do as thin line as you can and yeah it's definitely again it's a time consuming step but it's one definitely worth doing just again it just um, helps to differentiate and define all of the different armor pieces and yeah it just makes the model just pop and look really cool but yeah it's nice to have all of these smaller details it just makes the model look really good from a distance so on the gaming table if someone decides to pick it up and wants to look at it it'll look cool up close as well but yeah already just loving the green and yeah adding this brown onto it into all of the crevices and yeah just all the pits on the armor and that just looks super cool so yeah i've just been over everything so let's have a quick look at it so you can see what it's like so far but yeah you can see all the different contrast in the shadows and then yeah you can just see how all of the armor bits just like pop out now that we've lined it and yeah you can see all the different like how all the different greens come together because they've got more stuff to contrast against so yeah we're just moving on to the scrag brown now just adding some bigger areas of rust so this is um again the more sort of diluted in like dirty paint water and yeah, we'll just be like tapping it on some of the rivets and yeah, just uh, putting it, like letting it pool in some places where we would believe rust would gather. And yeah, just doing like a little bit of lining and stuff with that. But yeah, again, it's just adding more contrast to it. Just an extra layer of detail. So we've just um, got some more colours for the browns to bounce off of and yeah, it just helps to find the green again. But yeah, super fun models to paint. 
I really do love these ones, there's so much you can do to them, loads of different textures and effects you can apply to them. So yeah, definitely, definitely love these models. Lots and lots of fun to paint. adding some dots where I've previously had some of the Doom Ball Brown as well and just let them mix together. Yeah, so you just get like a nice contrast between the different kinds of rust and the darker brown and the lighter and the more orangey brown. Yeah, let's just have a look at him now. So I've added some of that. And yeah, again, just um, getting more and more happy the further I get along with this model. So yeah, hopefully you have a lot of fun painting this one as well. I'll just be using this matte black and I'll just be going over all of the tubes and everything that I'd like to be black. So yeah, I'll just be going over his tubes and um, his main book that he's writing on, I'm going to do the pages of that black. I'll just be going over all, all the silver parts of this lead belcher. Yeah, I decided to go with the silver for the shoulder pads and the, or for the trim on the shoulder pads, uh, just because there's already quite a lot of um, browns on the model. So yeah, this will help like differentiate it again, help add some more contrast. And also we will be adding a wash to the to the trim as well. So it won't just be um, like a bright silver trim, it, we will dull it down. But yeah, it'd just be nice to add a bit different contrast to it. I'm just be using this uh, Balthazar Gold for the abacus he's got. Yeah, there he is with all his uh, silver bits done. And then, yeah, the Balthasar gold on the abacus. Yeah, plenty of contrast, looking really cool. But yeah, some of the metallics look quite shiny, but we're just going to dull them down with this Agrax Earth shade. And yeah, it's a nice way to sort of control how, I don't know, how brown it looks. So yeah, like I said, we chose the silver because, yeah, just to help differentiate the parts and not have too much brown on the model. And yeah, with uh, using the wash we can sort of choose how much we'd like to dull it and how much of the silver we, we leave remaining. Yeah, just take your time with this step. Try not to splodge it onto the other parts of the model. Because yeah, at the moment we are adding rust and stuff to it, but we're doing it in a very controlled manner. And yeah, it's all very controlled and purposeful. But yeah, we don't want the model to end up looking messy. But yeah, as you can see, we've like dulled it down. Got some cool definition on the shoulder pads. 
in on that part in his backpack. And then yeah, we'll just be going back in with scrag brown and just adding some like rusty bits to some of the silver parts. And yeah, just making some more dirty paint water. <laughs> some dots here and there, just trying to get it on the rivet and just where we think rust would build up. But yeah, it's nice to use this method, the scrag brown and making it basically like dirty paint water. When it dries it does go very like powdery and does look like really close to how rust looks. But yeah, here you go, you can see just where I've added it. But yeah, model's really starting to come together, it's really starting to pop and look cool. Yeah, now we're just going to go around and do the opposite and edge highlight everything with this dawn yellow. I'm just using my 00 brush for this one. But yeah, again, we're just helping define all the different parts. And yeah, this will help make the greens like really pop. And yeah, look really, really cool. Yeah, it's another time consuming step, but definitely a step that's worth doing. But yeah, just take your time, enjoy yourself, just go slow, and yeah, just get the edge highlights as thin as you can. And yeah, just be hitting every edge. And yeah, that'll help break up all the greens, and you'll be able to see all the different colour transitions. And yeah, just helps to differentiate all the different green parts. But yeah, as you can see, it's added so much, I don't know, just pop to the figure and yeah, cool definition. There's so much contrast on it. Yeah, this looks super cool. It's getting happier and happier. Yeah, absolutely love these models. There's so much detail you can do with them. We'll just be adding a snake bite leather to like all the wooden parts. Here he's got like a weird sort of wooden book cover. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be adding that on there. I'll just be going over all the bone pieces with this Ushanti bone. Yeah, he's got all little skulls on his abacus there. And then he's got like a, a bone scribe and there's like a bone piece in the book as well. And yeah, he's just got some like a skeleton and looks like a thigh bone or something hanging off his backpack. And I'll be doing all of the parchment with this colour as well. I'll just be going over all the bone pieces with this skeleton hoard, but I won't be going over the parchment with it. So before I put a filter over the parchment, I'm going to do some uh, writing on there and uh, filter it with a different colour. So I'm just using the matte black to do the text on him. 
I'm not very good at freehand or doing text or even just writing normally. So yeah, we're just giving it a go anyway and doing the best we can. I'm not going to get any better at it if we don't practice, so we might as well try and put something on there. And just going to add this um, serif and sepia to shade over it. I'm just using this because it's quite transparent but it still dyes the, um, the Upshanti bone a nice colour. And yeah, it just help bring the black look more sort of cohesive and make the um, make the parchment and write in look all as one thing. But yeah, as you can see, it is dyeing it a nice colour and the black shining through it nicely. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how that looks. I'm just going to be using this matte white to do the text inside his book. So again, I'm not the best at freehand or doing any sort of writing. But yeah, we'll give it a go anyway. Like I said, we're not going to get any good out if we don't try and practice it. But yeah, might as well try and put something on there, even if it's not, even though you're not maybe completely happy with it. But if you get better at it in the future, you can always just paint over this bit black and then do it again. So yeah, it is nice to try. And I'm just going to be filtering over it with this steam fire magenta. I just thought that would give it a nice cool look to it. trying to go over the symbols from like on the inside of them so we still got the magenta color in there but we just got like a bit of this white right in the like the center of it to help it pop again but yeah just take your time you can just keep painting over it in black and trying again until you're happy with it yeah, we're just moving on to his hood and cloak. And yeah, we're just sort of doing like a patchy base coat of this. Because we'll just be um, using a shade after this one. So yeah, it's nice to make it patchy so you get plenty of texture in there and you can see that it's material. Definitely weathered and worn looks suit Death Guard and Nurgle really well. Yeah, so I'm just adding the noon all over it all now. Yeah, that'll just be increasing our depth and shadow. I'm just going over it with the corn red now, so we're doing lots of scratchy lines over the top. And yeah, just adding texture to it. So yeah, it's um, thin or wet paint that I'm using. So yeah, we're just adding the look of texture and not actual texture to the model. And then yeah, I'm just stepping it up now with the Mephiston Red. And yeah, I'll be trying to aim inside of the um, where I've done the, the lines with the Corn Red. And yeah, we're just up in the contrast and getting a nice red to pop through. And yeah, just plenty of texture. Definitely want it look weathered and worn and like textile. I'll just be using these colours for his flesh. So you can just about see his face through there. So just added the Cadian flesh tone. And then we're just popping on the Kislev flesh. And then the camera didn't capture it, but I put the um, the carb crumbs on, on after and then just re-highlighted him again with the Cadian flesh tone and the Kislev flesh. Now I'm just doing his eyes with this one, giving him a little bit of a glow. So you're just adding the darkest green on, moving up to the next brightest green. And then, yeah, just dotting it with the dawn yellow just to get them to pop. 
see yeah, there he is. It's all done. So pleased with the model, it looks so cool. All of the lining was worth it. Like doing all of the lining in the shadows and then lining his armor with the, um, the edge highlights. All the different cool rust effects on there. Nice and neat, not random, just all purposefully placed. Yeah, just bringing it in, camera's struggling a bit there to focus. But yeah, just super, super happy with the model. It looks so cool. Absolutely love this kind of green. And yeah, Death Guard and Nurgle stuff. There's so much detail. Love painting them. And yeah, just give you a bit of a further away look just so you can see what it looks like from a bit further back. A bit more of a realistic look at him. But yeah, I'm super happy with how he's turned out. Uh, thank you for watching and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Like, like. Comment. Subscribe. Share. Share.